After your vehicle has been sitting overnight, you hop into your vehicle, fire it up, throw it into gear, and off you go. There you are cruising down the highway, heading towards your destination, when all of the sudden the transmission goes to neutral. The engine RPMs climb as the vehicle starts to lose forward momentum. This forces you to pull over to the side of the road. There you try to figure out what's going on. You're shifting from drive now down into like a manual gear, manual first, manual second. Still feels like it's in neutral. You even shift it into reverse. Still nobody home. So you're forced to just kill the engine, let the engine cool off. At some time later, you decide to fire the engine back up and uh, throw it into drive and boom, boom. Hey, we got an engagement. We got a gear. You throw it into reverse, another bump. We're looking good. So you throw it into drive and you get back onto the highway as quickly as you can. Got a one, two upshift, two, three upshift and uh, you're flying down the road and uh, all is good once again. But then out of nowhere, the transmission goes to neutral once again. Vehicle starts slowing down and again, you're forced to pull off to the side of the road and the cycle repeats. Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. Every time I hear this exact same scenario, it has me leaning towards a problem with the filter in the automatic transmission. And let me explain why. The transmission I have here is the GM4L60E, super popular transmission. It was used from 93 to roughly uh, 2014. Uh, just to name a few vehicles, it can be found in uh, Chevy's lineup like the Camaro, the Corvette, uh, Chevy Avalanche, uh, Chevy Tahoe, Chevy Blazer, and so on. The list goes on and on. You can see an exhaustive list of all the vehicles that this transmission was used in in the video description down below. But to get back on point here, uh, anytime I hear that scenario of, you know, the vehicle works fine when it's cold, and as soon as it heats up and gets up to operating temperature, the transmission starts slipping, it always has me leaning towards a problem with the filter. Uh, and specifically, a plugged oil filter. Uh, how the, uh, this whole setup works is anytime the engine's running, the pump uh, underneath this casting here, the pump is uh, also rotating at engine speed and it's drawing in or sucking in uh, ATF, or I'm just gonna call it fluid for short. That fluid comes from the pan, gets sucked in uh, through the opening in the filter here, makes its way down uh, the neck of the filter and into the pump. From here, that oil becomes pressurized. It gets sent uh, in a number of different directions. One of them is down to the valve body, which uh, directs oil uh, to different clutch packs, depending on how the valve body is being commanded by the computer, also known as a PCM. So uh, point is, oil uh, leaves the pump and it gets sent in a number of different directions. One of them is down to the valve body, so it can ultimately feed our clutch packs. Uh, the other direction oil is sent is into the torque converter. Our torque converter for this 4L60E is right here. This converter usually lives right here, rotates like so here. Uh, oil is pumped into that converter, uh, and because the converter is the greatest source of heat in the automatic transmission, we're constantly pumping fluid into the torque converter and simultaneously pumping it out of the converter. So we're, we're flushing the converter constantly to keep the converter from overheating. The oil that leaves the converter travels uh, across the pump like so to one of our cooler lines here, goes uh, towards the front of the vehicle, uh, typically into the radiator where there's a transmission cooler. The oil is cooled and sent back via the other radiator uh, or the other transmission cooler line, goes back into the uh, side of the transmission case, back into a different passageway inside of the pump here, and ultimately it makes its way over to the planetary gear set. We've got gears that are in constant mesh and they need to be not only lubricated, but they need to be cooled. So we use that cooled oil to cool that planetary gear set. Once this planetary gear set is fed with oil, the oil is free to fall via gravity right back down into the bottom of the transmission or into the pump or into the uh, oil pan. Point is when the transmission's cold, if there's a bunch of sediment in the uh, pan, stuff that's been like circulating around in here, it's gonna all be settled at the bottom of the pan. But once we fire up the vehicle 
and uh, we start driving, we know oil, now, now you know that oil is constantly circulating through, this oil, uh, through the oil filter, through the pump, and circulating throughout the transmission, keeps making its way back to the pan to get sucked up by the filter once again. Uh, when the transmission's cold, the, settle, uh, the sediment is gonna stay, some of it may be loose and floating around depending on what, what's floating around on the trans. But uh, just like a dishwasher though, as, this, as the engine and the transmission both come up to temp, uh, just like a hot dishwasher, it cleans better. So if there's stuff that's settled on the bottom of the pan, well, it's no longer gonna be settled there. Uh, it, we're dealing with hot oil and it's essentially gonna start cleaning the pan. It's not gonna clean it perfectly. Anybody that's dropped an oil pan knows that. Uh, but uh, any stuff that was kind of loose sitting on the bottom, it's now in suspension and the oil floating around and it's getting sucked up by the oil filter. So as the engine's up to temp and now we continue to suck fluid into the oil filter, little by little, all those uh, particles are getting drawn into the filter and it starts to plug the oil filter. It gets bad enough that uh, the filter becomes completely plugged. Now we don't have any uh, oil going into the pump and the oil that's supposed to be sent to the clutch packs is no, it, it's been cut off and so the oil pressure starts to drop and those clutch packs are heavily reliant upon uh, a high enough oil pressure to keep the clutch packs engaged. As soon as they, they start to release, uh, the, we, the transmission starts slipping and we essentially go to neutral. Once we pull over and we let the vehicle cool down, one of the things that's gonna happen is the fluid that's uh, in this section of the pump and, and the, the neck of the filter here, that fluid's gonna start to dribble back down or run back down into the oil pan. Uh, that action's gonna essentially clean the oil filter and that sediment and stuff's gonna start uh, falling or settling back to the bottom of the pan. So once we've, had a, once we've let the transmission sit for long enough, enough of that sediment or all of it is gonna have settled uh, back to the bottom of the pan. And now our oil filter is clear enough that we can fire the engine back up. And now our pump is able to receive oil, meaning our clutches are able to receive oil pressure. And once again, we've got gears and all is honky dory. It's at this point that a lot of people think, oh, I just need to install a new filter and all is gonna be good. Well, maybe, but maybe not. Um, it's possible that the filter's plugged and it just needs to be, you know, the transmission needs to be serviced, which is going to involve replacing the filter. But it's also possible that there's other problems going on inside of the transmission. Uh, for example, there's uh, multiple clutch packs inside of the unit itself and in the converter that lives right here, this guy, it also has a large uh, clutch inside of it. Either way, uh, those clutches can start to uh, fall apart for whatever reason. Uh, and believe it or not, the clutches are made out of paper. It's paper glued onto you know, a metal backing plate. Uh, but at any rate, as the clutches start to shed that paper, that paper starts circulating through the oil and it's the paper that could be plugging up the filter. I guess best case scenario, the transmission needs to be serviced, but um, in all honesty, it might just be a band-aid for a much bigger problem. But uh, hey, if you're out on the road, uh, open road, and you're trying to get back home and uh, maybe putting in a new filter, filter, if I could speak, maybe installing a new filter will buy you enough time to get your vehicle and your family back home. Uh, speaking of which, if you're interested in learning how to service a transmission, specifically this GM4L60E here on the bench, uh, I just uh, put together a video on that and uh, you can find the link in the video description down below. And if all goes as planned, there'll be uh, a pop-up at the end of the video. Hey, I hope this video uh, has served you well. Uh, if so, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell too so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos because I've got a lot more coming your way. Once again, my name's Robert. Thanks so much for your time and I look forward to catching you in another video real soon. See ya.